Hello everyone, this is going to be a quick turnaround introduction. We just did our first lo-fi and hushed practice this morning, and I shared the flow, a brief introduction to what Lectio looks like, in combination with poetry, and then we practiced, as I like to think it's beautiful, but unglamorous, and practice takes practice, and so if you want to listen, oh sorry buddy, just give me one second, okay? It was beautiful, it was unglamorous, and now my son is here to join the party. And if you want to listen to it and give it a try, that'd be great. And you can share any reflections or thoughts on the September non-required reading list in the comments section. And if you want to sign up to do the weekly session, head on over to contemplify.com slash hush now there's the details of the flow and all that good stuff i hope you enjoy the practice and again i'd love to read any of your reflections on hadowich of antwerp's amazing poem you can do do that by adding comments to the september non-required reading list okay enough for me thanks talk to you all later bye-bye Good morning, good people. It's so good to be with you for this grand experiment of lo-fi and hushed. This is the very first one, and it's marking the passage of the autumn equinox. And since it is the very first one, I'm going to use this space before Lectio to offer a brief introduction on Lectio Divina itself, because I know that there's some who are, this is new for them. And then we'll do just a slightly shortened version of Lo-Fi and Hushed. In future sessions, the thought before Lectio will be much, much briefer. So to kick us off, a few quotes on Lectio Divina. The first comes from the 16th century Spanish Carmelite mystic, John of the Cross. He says, Seek by reading and you'll find by meditating. Cry in prayer, and the door will be opened in contemplation. Benedictine sister Joan Chittister writes this on Lectio. And eventually, slowly, unerringly over time, like water on a rock, Lectio begins to seep into the monastic soul. It becomes the sacred song of the heart. It changes us so that somehow, someday, we find the courage and the character and the energy to go on trying to change the world around us. And here's a few quotes on poetry to to stitch them together into lo-fi and hushed. Mary Oliver says, Poetry is a life-cherishing force. For poems are not words, after all, but fires for the cold, ropes let down to the lost, something as necessary as bread in the pockets of the hungry. And from Audre Lorde, poetry is not only a dream and a vision, it is the skeleton architecture of our lives. It lays the foundation for a future of change, a bridge across our fears of what has never been before. And this last one, it's it's juicy. (laughs) It comes from Reiner Maria Rilke, and it's really challenging, but it speaks to the center of what lo-fi and hushed is all about. Rilke says, if your daily life seems poor, do not blame it. Blame yourself that you are not poet enough to call forth its riches. For the Creator, there is no poverty. So I share these quotes on Lectio Divina and on poetry to impress upon us the ground they share. In my non-cloistered life, 
Mystical poetry has been a breaking open for me when paired with Lectio. That is how Lo-Fi and Hushed was born. I hope you're getting, beginning to get a taste for what Lo-Fi and Hushed might entail. The method itself is best explained by the Carthusian monk, Guigo II, from the 12th century, or as I like to call him, Guigo the Sequel. Guigo wrote a very short book called The Ladder of Monks, which was basically just a letter on the contemplative life to a brother. The ladder that he talks about in The Ladder of Monks is the practice of Lectio Divina, and he uses that ladder as an analogy of the soul's connective movements to God. And on that ladder, there are four rungs, reading, meditation, prayer, and contemplation. Now, one can read this as a method of ascension, like up, up, up we go to connect with God, a God in the sky. But that's not what Guigo is getting at. My favorite spin on Guigo's take of Lectio Divina says otherwise. Guigo writes, reading puts, as it were, whole food into your mouth. Meditation chews it and breaks it down. Prayer finds its savor. Contemplation is the sweetness that so delights and strengthens. Another really helpful Guigo shorthand is this. Reading seeks, meditation perceives, prayer asks, and contemplation tastes. I encourage you to find your own spin, your own metaphor of interdependency, of exchange, one that you can call your very own in Lectio. As for me, I see these first three movements, that they're active movements toward the beloved, like a stone skipping three times across the water towards mystery through a poem. And those three skips, I see it reading and discursive meditation as the modes of intellectual and storied pursuit of God, and prayer as the embodied longing for God in myself and in the world, recollecting and remembering movements working on the marrow of the poem itself. Practically speaking, I think of these first three movements as active in the first half of the practice that leads to a threshold. And that threshold, when the stones stop skipping, they submerge into the water. And this is contemplation, the fourth movement that Guigo describes as tasting, a rushing in of God to meet us in our unfinished pursuits is receptive posture. This movement is a passive reception by the acceptance of infused contemplation and undisciplined grace. The fourth movement, contemplation, is being saturated in a lowing hallelujah. In this practice, we breathe deep with the beloved and recognize our pursuits, our longings, and our hunger that opens us up to a place of tasting. Now, because this is our first time practicing together like this, I'm going to go ahead and say the names of the different movements when we enter them in both their English and Latin versions at spacious intervals just to mark transitions, um, but to your own self be true. If that doesn't feel right, follow the flow that is calling to you. In future sessions, I won't be calling out the different transition points, but really inviting you to listen to the way the spirit is drawing upon a rhythm that calls to you. So as you saw, I dropped in the chat a link to a written version of this flow uh, that I hope you'll find helpful for those who would like to have a bit of a script to follow. So with that, end of that brief word before Lectio, let us begin Lectio reading. I do not complain 
of suffering for love. It becomes me always to submit to her, whether she commands in storm or stillness. One can know her only in herself. This is an unconceivable wonder which has thus filled my heart and makes me stray in a wild desert. I do not complain of suffering for love. It becomes me always to submit to her, whether she commands in storm or stillness. One can know her only in herself. This is an unconceivable wonder, which has thus filled my heart and makes me stray in a wild, desert. I do not complain of suffering for love. It becomes me always to submit to her, whether she commands in storm or stillness. One can know her only in herself. This is an unconceivable wonder which has thus filled my heart It makes me stray in a wild desert. Meditatio Discursive Meditation.
oratio, prayer. Contemplatio, contemplation.
Let's close with a bow before mystery and one another, all of us gathered here, in the practice of Lectio, the practice of lo-fi and hushed. Thank you for being here for this inaugural practice. And uh, for those interested in sharing their reflections, I, would, I, for one, would love to know how this poem by Hadowich of Antwerp, a Beguine mystic, how, it's, how you received it, how you chewed on it, uh, if it embodied any longings for you, and then how you sat and tasted it. If you do want to offer any reflections, you can do so in the comments on the September non-required reading list. I look forward to offering my own and reading some others as well. And I will share the audio from this there too. If you want to join this very beautiful but unglamorous practice on Wednesdays, uh, we're going to keep it going. Uh, if you want to sign up for that, go to contemplify.com slash hush now. As we depart, let us remember the mystery never leaves you alone. May we all cup our ear and lean in. Be well. Till next time, friends.